Hello and welcome to episode 48 of the How to Survive podcast. My name is Joe, and joining me as ever is Chris Morris. Hello, Chris. Guten Tag. Ich sehe, ich sehe. That means I see. Yes, mm. I see, I see. Yes, said the blind man. <laughs> it's a joke, it's a one liner. I see, said the blind man. You can't see, can you? Yeah. It's a good joke. Okay. Moving on. The movie this week is a Austrian film nominated in 2014, or put forward, I should say, as their entry into the Oscar for foreign language feature. Mm -hmm. This film should not be in the Oscars. (laughs) And Uh, and it wasn't. Yeah, and rightly so. Uh, The film is Good Night, Mummy. Good Night, Mommy. Good Night, Mommy. Good Night, (laughs) Mommy. That's Austrian, isn't it? It's something. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't seen Good Night, Mommy, that's Mommy with the American spelling, M-O-M-M-Y. Mm-hmm. If you haven't seen it, do go and seek it out because we are about to uh, laboriously dissect the film. <laughs> and it's stellar plot. Uh, which, you know, twists you won't see coming. No. You won't see coming from the, the f- first five minutes. I, di- I honestly didn't see it coming. I did see it coming. I know. The point I'm trying to make is, we're about to spoil the film, so if you haven't seen it, go and seek it on Amazon or whatever you want to do it on, yeah. um, if you have to. Uh, Al- alternatively, just listen to the podcast, because, yeah. I mean, you might look up the trailer and go, oh, that looks like a really interesting, like, sort of gripping uh, psychological thriller, so that looks like it would be really intense, um, oh, I wonder if there's a supernatural element, and, you know, it's one of these mystery sort of films. You might think that from we'll, watching the trailer. We'll, we'll come to that. I can see where you're going with this, and we'll come to that. But I want to dive into the plot first. Okay. Recap it, if anyone's seen it. Uh, Careful you don't break your neck. It's a 2014 film. Because it's a shallow plot. I see. We could dive into it. Ich sehe. <laughs> ich sehe, ich sehe. Uh, because it's, it's 2014 is the movie, so it's, it's quite possible that most of our listeners... 2014. <laughs> The second sequel to 2012. You, you're, you got the giggles today. I was just excited to talk about this film. <laughs> <laughs> so the movie came out in 2014, yeah. and it is very possible that most of our listenership has already seen it. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, last chance you can you can go watch it. Otherwise, I'm going to plan one with the plot, uh, a recap, or as yeah. a as an alternative to watching it. Yeah. Two twin boys play in the woods and countryside near their modernist home. They are Lucas and Elias. Their mother returns home from facial surgery with her face covered with bandages. One of the boys, Lucas, seems to have a fractured relationship with the mother and does all of his talking through his brother. Elias seems anguished by this setup and by the broken relationship between his mother and brother. The boys begin to think that their mother, underneath her bandages, is an imposter and Lucas begins to goad Elias into pushing their mother's limits. First by bringing home an injured cat, despite being ordered not to bring animals home, and then through increasing confrontation about who she really is. The climactic confrontation involves the mother taking Elias into his bedroom and beating him until he admits that she is his mother. However, Lucas soon talks him back round to his way of thinking. Eventually, the mother removes her bandages, and seeing that the operation was a success, she returns to her maternal nature. However, Elias and Lucas are still not convinced, since her face has now changed, so they do the only logical thing. They tie her to her bed when she sleeps, and when she wakes up, they begin to torture her over several days, insisting that she tell them where their real mother is. On the second night, now horrifically disfigured and soaked in her own urine, the mother is untied in order to change the sheets. As she does so, she makes a break for it, but stumbles over a tripwire and knocks herself unconscious. She stirs as she's being dragged across the floor and awakes properly to find her hands super glued to the floor as Elias begins to set fire to a tank of alcohol he'd previously used to embalm a cat earlier in the film. As his mother pleads with him, she agrees to play along with his game and pretend that Lucas is still alive, revealing that the Lucas we've seen through the film was actually a figment of Elias' imagination. 
It's too little too late for Elias, who sets fire to the curtains and leaves his mother to burn to death. As firefighters try to extinguish the blaze, Elias runs through the cornfields outside the family home until his brother Lucas and his mother walk through the mist to join him. They pose as a family, recreating a photo much beloved by Elias. And that's how Goodnight Mummy ends. Chris, you've got your head in your hands. Uh, I can only assume because you love the film so much. <laughs> mm. So, traditionally, at this point, we ask, what did you think of the movie? Yeah. I think your, your body language is that of someone who says, I don't like this film. Would you agree with that? Well, um, I, I love the premise. Okay. Yeah. The premise of two boys, uh, they're at home, their mother yeah. returns from facial surgery, she's bandaged facially, and they begin to suspect that it's not actually their mother. Right. That is a genius setup. Yep. Like that that is top level uh Tra- film childhood setup. paranoia getting the best um getting the best of them basically. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like those sorts of setups are made even even creepier by seeing it through a, a childhood uh, a prism of like childhood curiosity and mm-hmm. vulnerability yep. um, I would say that the film never lives up to that premise and I was really disappointed by it I think one thing that really lets it down is the fact that the trailer as you mentioned earlier mm-hmm. was spectacular hmm. it's a trailer that I showed to my fiance yeah. I said do you want to watch this film with me and she said no because that looks terrifying mm-hmm. and I said well Fair enough. I agree. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, it looks amazing. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're horror movie fans, so that's mm-hmm. the sort of thing we seek out. Mm-hmm. Disappointing, yes. Very disappointing, because much of the the terror and the uh, the sort of claustrophobic fear that you... The, the creeping... It's very creepy. The mm-hmm. f- trailer is terrifying. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's very good for a trailer to be that scary. Yeah. But the movie isn't. No. It's kind of laborious and then exploitative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think it's it's sort of really obtuse all the way through. Right. Um, and it's hard to tell, like, what is really going on. And, and we are um, really big advocates of um, ambiguity in films, yeah. aren't we? Like, frequently. Well, like The Shining last week where we spent yeah, like we several hours. It. Yeah, like, yeah, lauding it. Yeah, but this is... This is um, I, I, for one thing, the central premise, right? The, watching the film, I don't think that I actually believed that she wasn't really the mother at any point. Mm. I, th- I, I think, I don't know why, but like the, the in the trailer, yeah, and like I, I, I don't want to keep harking back to the trailer all the time, but that did set up an expectation of of the film, yeah, that the film didn't match. It's quite egregious, really. I mean, it is. It's almost false advertising in a way hmm. because. They sold it as a film that was going to be this... Like, it seemed like The Witch, in a way. If you yeah. go back a few weeks. It's this like intense paranoia, claustrophobia. Yeah. There's, so, there's something supernatural happening, maybe. Ooh, wh- what's it going to be? What's the real story here? Yeah, exactly. Because there's the one shot that stands out from the trailer. And we, we've already said we're going to spoil it, so mm-hmm. don't worry. In the trailer, they, they put a cockroach in their mother's face as she sleeps. Mm-hmm. And the cockroach goes in her mouth. And she crunches down on the cockroach and bites mm. it. But actually, in the film, she's just eating in bed yeah. at a similar angle. And it's yeah. almost that like they've deliberately they, they, well, done they've, that. They've cut two separate scenes together. Yeah, to make it look like yeah. she eats the cockroach. And yeah. she never eats the cockroach. No. Um, and yeah, things like that uh, make give it the impression that it's yeah, there's something deeper level going mm. on. Mm. Um, the, the other thing that really annoyed me is that... Um, and I know that big plot twist films there's always some twat who comes out going oh yeah I knew exactly what it was going to say mm. and I stood up in the cinema and I said yeah. oh it's uh, you know it's actually in modern times and yeah, uh, yeah. everyone stood up and applauded me because they thought <laughs> I was brilliant right I, I did guess the twist five minutes in mm. um, because if you're if you're going to set, set your whole film to pivot on one like revelation right don't have in the second scene after the mother returns uh, a very like pointed conversation in which 
the son points out that she's only made dinner for the, one of them. Mm. And she says, yeah, but you know why that is. Yeah. And I and I went, oh. Because I've seen a psychological thriller before. Right, yeah. And I know how films like this work. And I went, oh, the boy is dead. One of the boys is dead. And then for the rest of the film, I was going, yeah, she still hasn't acknowledged him at any point. Yeah, they still <laughs> haven't had a conversation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I mean, you described it in your recap as a fracture, fractious relationship. Yeah. But they essentially have no relationship <laughs> yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. Because one of them is dead. And it's it's almost like, you know, when you watch it, when you, there's a, you know, everyone goes, oh, Sixth Sense is brilliant. Mm. That twist that you made at the end of Sixth Sense is amazing. And you rewatch the film and you're like, how did I not notice that? Yeah. yeah. Well, I did notice it. Yeah. The whole way through, I noticed yeah. the twist in Goodnight Mummy. And I, maybe that's, that's part of the reason that I didn't enjoy it. Maybe. You know what? I... Maybe I'm an idiot, and I feel a no, bit. No, I, 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 feel, I, I feel a bit stupid because I'm I, I don't want to. I don't want to make a massive deal out of it because I do. I, I'm wary of coming across as that guy who. No, says, no, no. I, I think it was well. It was pretty well telegraphed. Like yeah. I, I didn't see it coming, and it was only in the final shot when she says, "Oh, Elias, mm. Lucas is dead." Yeah, and I was like, "Oh, right, that's." My mind was a bit yeah, blown. I but like, I'm an idiot for not realizing. Right. Yeah, but. Oh, I mentioned I'd showed my fiance the trailer. Mm-hmm. I'd started watching a film at one point and she came in the room and I said, she said, what's it like? I said, well, they just played this game where they're playing like a guessing game. You know, they're po- yeah, yeah. posting it on the head. Yeah. And she has on her head, mama, which mm-hmm. is her. Yeah. And Elia says to her, well, you've got two children. Yeah. And she can't, she can't work out who that is. Yeah. And I said, oh, it's, do you know, it's, it's almost like she can't remember who, who she is. Yeah, or she's an imposter. Yeah, it's like and she's an imposter, yeah. and and she's such a bad actress yeah. that, uh, like, I mean, the character is yeah, it's yeah. a bad bad enough portrayal of their mother that she can't remember that she's supposed to have two children. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Hannah, yeah, you want to say, said, "I've worked out the ending." Yeah, I said, don't tell me. And mm. then at the end, when it finished, she goes, "He was dead, wasn't he?" Yeah, was like, yeah. So <sighs> that's how obvious it was. So I don't. Yeah. I don't think you're you're acting Billy Big Bollocks by saying it. I yeah. think it's probably. I, d- I, d- I just felt like they front loaded like a lot of really <laughs> telegraphed things, yeah. um, and it it annoyed me. Mm. Like it, it's implied at some stage before the events of the film, she has been sort of playing along, because there's even a bit where she she's she takes a phone call mm. and she says. You get, like uh, Elias is hoovering yeah. and he stops the vacuum cleaner so he can hear her mm. on the phone and you, the snatch of conversation that you hear is her talking to someone on the phone saying I don't want to play along anymore mm. and you're thinking oh that's because she's actually you know it's, she's been put here by someone to pretend to be the mother she doesn't want to pretend to be the mother anymore that's pretty, you know this is really yeah. interesting but actually she's saying to someone I don't want to pretend that my other son is alive anymore right, yeah. because my other child can't accept it. Yeah. But I mean, the, a, a few other things wrangled with me. Mm-hmm. Wrangled with me. Yeah. Um, I think that a lot of the scenes that are supposed to lend that, lend the film that sort of ambiguity fall really flat. So the opening scene mm-hmm. shows presumably Lucas going into a dark tunnel right which uh is, is presumably this is the accident that yeah kills they, 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 they refer to an accident that takes place um and she keeps saying to elias i don't blame you for the accident yeah yeah right but it it's not clear it's not clear enough to be because it's if that scene happens and then it's not mentioned or touched upon mm. right but it's not clear enough what has happened yeah in my opinion like it doesn't it doesn't set out the the events in a clear enough manner for it to be like oh god you know like I don't I don't know do you, do you see what I mean like it I is, do I do but then if if it had shown Lucas falling off a cliff and dying yeah I know yeah but it's, 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 there's there's ambiguity and then there's poor communication mm. although in the sixth sense I mean I'm taking it most of listeners have seen the sixth sense or know the twist mm-hmm. so apologies if you haven't got the spoiler for you. You see Bruce Willis get shot at the beginning, yeah. so it shouldn't be a surprise to learn that he's dead at the end. Yeah, but that that works because it's you, you know people survive shootings, yeah. right? 
and but and also shoot being shot is an inherently dangerous yes. life threatening event. Going into a dark tunnel in a wood isn't necessarily an inherently dangerous thing because I'm sure we've you know been exploring mm. in the woods or whatever and gone oh this is a dark thing and it just feels like a scene that's in isolation rather than a you know there could just be a scene showing that they sort of run around the woods and they mm. explore in their you know left to their own devices a lot yeah, yeah. which is sort of what it, what it felt like yeah but as I say like ten minutes later I sort of went oh so I assume that scene is showing the kid dying. I couldn't say. Like, I, I didn't. Was, I didn't read it. I just thought it was like one of them egging on the other one. Yeah. It, it, the other thing is, it's quite confusing who each of them are. Yeah. Until you've like watched it or worked out a twist. Yeah. I was like, I mean, identity is a big thing in this film. Yeah. Obviously, who's the mother under that mask? The kids frequently wear masks throughout it to uh-huh. disguise themselves. Uh, but I guess the, the main thing is, whoever you look like on the outside, you you could be someone else underneath. Hmm. So you could look like a nice 10-year-old boy, but actually you're a psychopath. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, like other other parts of the film seem to be almost like abandoned plot lines or mm. alternate things. Like the one thing that really annoyed me was that there there are there are constant mentions of the accident, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then that well, I I thought maybe now we're talking about it. The mother was involved in the accident. And exactly. That's why right? she had to have exactly reconstructive surgery. Yeah. yeah. So she has she has uh, the frequent mentions of a of an accident mm-hmm. coupled with the mother's plastic surgery imply and, like and a, a car. A, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. They they imply a car accident or something. But then there's the scene in her office which shows plastic surgery plans, which which you know suggests that it was just cosmetic. Yeah. Right. Then there's things like they find a building which is full of what appears to be a large number of skeletal remains. Yeah, like human skeletons. Yeah. yeah. That's never touched upon again. No. Never comes back into the fold. Um, the mother has a friend who dresses exactly like her. Yeah. Problem. And, like, what? what is that? Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? The, the, like, the mother has a photograph from when she was much younger. Yeah. And I thought it was her twin. I think we're saying that twins. But, yeah, but if that if that was it, if that was the, but it's not. It's literally, they. It's like they they go went. Oh, what would be a cool like little twist to the mystery? Mm. Oh, they find a photo of someone who looks exactly like their mother with their mother, mm. and then it's like they show it to her, and she goes, "Oh yeah, I had a friend, and sometimes we wore the same things." That's not a satisfying <laughs> explanation for that plot point. What about um, the year's supply of pizzas? Yeah, what is like. <sighs> It's like they they came up with a load of scenes that made for and we're returning to it again mm. made for the best trailer ever. Yes, right. And there's absolutely no satisfying explanation for any of them. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, I can't argue. I mean, what what was the cat about? Who hurt the cat? Why did he embalm it? Was that to try and like, oh, my mother hates dead <laughs> cats floating around in alcohol, yeah. so she'd never stand for it. Or like, she loves them, so if she freaks out about a dead cat yeah. swimming around in alcohol in our living room, then she can't be my... What is that about? It's... it's a, it, like, there's weird... Fi- like, I like weird films. Yeah. Mulholland Drive, for example, is brilliant, mm. okay? The Shining. The Shining, right? But there are... It's like I can't find the depth behind all of these events. Like normally you find, you go, oh, these are all weird things, but yeah. actually they're all about identity or they're all about, you know, possession mm. or, you know. Or the, the you could say, first they start by killing cockroaches and they kill a cat, then yeah. they kill a, a person. Like yeah, like es- yeah, escal- escalation. Yeah. There's none of that. But this, it doesn't feel like any of those things are actually underlying themes. No. And I think that's why... I'm, I, I was disappointed. Yeah. I guess I can, I can send you disappointment. Yeah. I'm going to play devil's advocate for a moment. Okay. And I say, although it's definitely a disappointment compared with what it could have been based on the trailer, uh, let's take a step back from our expectations. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to say it's not a bad film at all because... I don't, I don't think it's a bad film. I think mm-hmm. it's a disappointing film. Maybe that's, you know, my own having built up expectations. Yeah. But then I sort of feel like we live in a world where 
it's extremely rare that you won't have seen anything of a mm. film before you watch it. True. And so and in this case, that's true. You, you didn't see any of that. Well, yeah. that's true, yeah. Well, but I mean, like, it's, it's almost like th- these things don't exist in a vacuum. No. Right? And I don't think that if I just watched the film without that context, I would have enjoyed it more. Because mm. it's the... You could cut a lot of bad films into good trailers. Yes. You know? Yeah. But I, I don't think this is a bad film, because it, it suckered me. And I'm sure I'm the only person... I mean, I must be in a minority of people who didn't see the twist coming. Yeah. Because it was fucking obvious. I don't know what's wrong with me. But, <laughs> um, I mean, I even wrote down halfway through it. You know what we make notes as we watch Yeah, film? yeah. I wrote down, Isaac is the imposter. Right. Like, I don't know... That doesn't make any sense, because... Who is Isaac? Who, who, who are? <laughs> <laughs> Lucas. <laughs> 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 it's like wait you went off on a weird tangent <laughs> I was, still I was about, thinking um, is, Isaac, is Isaac the priest or the man the red cross man who comes to the door mm. I wrote down Lucas is the imposter right um, which doesn't make any sense because he's a twin yeah. so how could he possibly be the imposter but it's I was just I honestly was confused by it like to the point of like still at the last scene guessing was she the mother it yeah. was bizarre. Uh, however, one, one, that was one thing in, in favour of it that I, if you if you don't get it, you you, you, you probably enjoy it more. Yeah, cockroaches. Hmm. They're a cool thing because they are used frequently throughout it to unsettle you. I mean, we're naturally appalled and disgusted by cockroaches. Yeah, and for some reason, Elias has like a, a nest of cockroaches in his bedroom. Yeah, which he feeds one to his mother and. Well, he, yeah, there's that scene that we mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. it goes in her mouth. And there's also the scene where he has a dream that or they they both, well, he on his own has a dream, I mm. guess, because the other one doesn't exist, that he cuts her open and cockroaches spit out. Yeah. So uh, cockroaches, like, representing... Well, I, I've, I've watched an interview with the directors, mm-hmm. who, by the way, are weird. Are they? <laughs> and... They said that the cockroaches are there because basically, although, basically cockroaches exist everywhere. Right. Not in the UK where they're not, they're not native, but if you go to maybe Europe or America, mm-hmm. there's cockroaches under every shiny surface. So as much as everything looks nice, there are cockroaches underneath. Right. So although the mother is perhaps a beautiful person okay. on the outside, she's full of cockroaches inside. She's a, she's. A horrible person. Exactly. Well, that that tallies with her videoing, um, her abusing her mm. child, because I mean, one of, one of the thing that things that I also put me off the film is that it's quite troubling in a sort of s- emotional and social way, mm. um, because as as the film progresses, who are we supposed? To, who's the protagonist? Because I mean, you you might have felt differently, but I, I as I said, I was relatively sure that it was the mother. Mm. So the torture scenes are very uncomfortable, obviously, as they should be, but even more so when you consider the, the context of children being involved and children being the perpetrators, they mm. become even more uncomfortable. But then the mother is like abusive and distant too, and she films her abusing the the boy you know yeah. he shows her shows it back to her she's she the video she says i'm your mother of course and he says he plays her a video that she previously filmed on her phone yeah. of him crying and she slaps him and makes him say i won't listen to my brother anymore yeah because presumably he's dead, he's dead. yeah it is unsettling hmm. i mean it's perhaps perhaps the message of this film is the sins of the father becomes the sins of the son. You know, it, she, she's on a cycle of abuse and he, he'll become abusive in turn. Yeah, but then I don't think that the abuse angle is well enough defined to to be a... Mm. Especially considering that he seems to have this esteem for her pre-operation where she seems yeah. to have been nice. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? And I think, again, like the lack of coherence in terms of, you know, what it's trying to communicate in that respect... Mm is quite frustrating and um i think it actually becomes it becomes like a very inconsiderate depiction of mental illness mm. because the child is obviously mentally disturbed but it's sort of not really fleshed out yeah yeah he's just a movie crazy person isn't he yeah, yeah. i mean we're covering the omen in a few weeks yeah 
for episode 52. Mm-hmm. Uh, so jot that in your diary, listeners. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, but it, he, is, he does become a sort of, you know, Damien, doesn't he? Rather yeah. than a, a, a character for whom you feel there is a clear motivation. Mm. Hmm. Do you want some pointless IMDb trivia about the film? Um, well, you mean other than the fact that it was the entry for the Austrian uh, <laughs> foreign language film Oscar? Uh, yeah. Did you know that 240 twins were auditioned for the main roles, Joe? Now, is that 100 and... This is the question I was going to ask. Yeah. Do we think that's uh, 120 pairs of twins yeah. or 240 pairs of twins? Unfortunately, is- IMDb, as ever... Gives us no answers. Well, it does. It says two hundred forty twins. You take it. The word it was a hun- It was four hundred eighty. Can you have? It was one hundred twenty. Yeah. One hundred twenty pairs. Yeah. 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 Okay. I take that. Two hundred forty seems a lot for this this film. Yeah. But then it's an Oscar nominated, or d- nominated by the Austrian Film Board. The Austrian Film Board are not known for their, <laughs> like, output. I don't think. Apparently Name not. an Austrian film. Ich sehe, ich sehe. That's this film. An, altern- <laughs> an alternative name is Ich sehe, ich sehe, yeah. which is I see, I see. Mm-hmm. Why was it called that? I don't know. It's that, well, instinctively, you'd say it's about realisation or, you know, like mm. you know, thinking you've seen the truth in stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so, he, you know, it could be that I see that my mother's not really real. But she is. Yeah. A bit, or you... Mark Kermode said it alludes to a sort of fairy tale sort of thing. Okay. But I don't really know why. So hmm. maybe a pointless thing uh, to mention it. But The actors, by the way, weren't given script. Mm-hmm. They were just basically told on the day what they'd be filming. Uh, basically to give the illusion that they yeah. they didn't know what was coming next as much as anyone else. Like they didn't know the twist was coming. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Okay. Quite good. Mm. Interesting way of making it or... or uh, useless. I think it's because they're kids and they wanted to keep them interested. Yeah. Because if they go, I don't. Yeah. Well, that's that's often a you know tact that they use with child actors. Like Room, mm. for example, I think it was filmed in that similar style. I know Brie Larson and um, I forget the kid's name, Jake. Somebody. Mm. Um, they lived together for a month. Oh really? Yeah. Um, so you know they they developed that bond. sort of yeah. bond and that dialogue. Um, together mm-hmm. uh, I doubt that they did the same for this film yeah but no, do you know they did send um, they did give everyone cockroaches so they could learn how to be comfortable around cockroaches the kids got two each and the the, uh, the mother got one as well which she had to practice putting in her mouth for that scene but in the end the cockroach couldn't be trained to go in her mouth so they had to CGI it right to think all that uh, mouth cockroach training that she went through <laughs> yeah. All for now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the, the the key parts of the film, Chris, mm-hmm. that we should probably discuss. Yeah. Um, the first part I'm calling it Hello Mummy, mm-hmm. so instead of Good Night Mummy. Yeah, it's very good. Good yeah. Morning Mummy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, very creepy and impactful the first time we see her. She's drawing the blinds because she's been told that sunlight will undo the good work they've done at the hospital in mm. breaking her nose and resetting it. Yeah. Um, so she she's very slim, and she's got this like, lollipop head because it's all wrapped up in bandages. Yeah. And the eye, black eyes, mm. both of them, and it's a, a vacant stare, bloodshot. Mm. Very, it, she casts a very unsettling shadow across the film, doesn't she? Yeah, I, I look back on this part of the film fondly because yeah. I was still with it at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's like, I, you know, visually the film is very striking. Mm. That has to be said. And the use of blinds all the way through is quite... Um, Striking, claustrophobic. Yeah, and mm. it's you know um, blinds are often used. Uh, I mean, they're frequently used in like film noir, mm. uh, and they 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 tend to be used to um, show characters as being trapped mm. because they look like prison, prison bars or a fractured soul as well. I think. Yeah, yeah. which is uh, all true here. Mm. The mother character is deeply unhinged herself. You mentioned it earlier in that she is clearly it's hard to understand whether she is the protagonist or not mm-hmm. because up to the last scene we're not even really meant to be sure that it, she is the mother yeah, yeah. so she's like a, a sort of ex child TV star no I think she was a, a presenter on something like Wheel of Fortune or right. the, the news okay. or something like that yeah. there's, there's pictures of her doing things like that yeah um, when they do an internet search mm-hmm. 
Uh, but she's obviously there's, there's pictures of like very slim women around the house. Yeah. So I think she lives in this very aesthetic bubble that she needs to look her best. She, that's yeah. why she's had this surgery. Hmm. So she's obviously meant to be narcissistic or yeah. selfish in some way. I think that's how I get it, and that's why she's so highly strung. Yeah. And there's that scene where she walks out into the woods naked, yeah. undoes her bandages, and then that sort of music video thing happens hmm. where she's like spinning her, her head. Yeah, yeah. really rapidly. In like a slow exposure, I guess. Yeah. Is that what it is? Well, it's like a, yeah, yeah. It'll probably be trickery as well. Mm. Yeah. Very music video, though. Yeah, it was, yeah. And that bit is in the trailer. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it is quite striking visually, but it's what it obviously trailer. a dream. Mm-hmm in the context that it's used in the film yeah which was disappointing again <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, the post-it game we, we mentioned earlier when she's she's yeah. got mama on her head and she fails to recognise that she's meant to be the mama yeah and that's quite clever in introducing us to her because that's where we learn that she was a, a TV star and yeah and also it sets the tension as well it yeah. sets, sets the temp, takes the temperature for the film and says actually <clears throat> this is going to be an uncomfortable ride because they're not playing together. You know, they're not playing together. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like the ten Cloverfield Lane scene. Yeah, where they play um, taboo. No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Where they play taboo, and uh, the one character is unable to. Well, you you have to see this if you've seen Ten Cloverfield Lane. I'm sure you remember the scene, but it's done in a way that shows up the differences between the I'm characters. watching you I know what you're doing yeah, yeah yeah exactly and it's used to build tension quite well and mm. it is you know it's good in this in this film as well mm. we always like to check in with dinner scenes mm-hmm. um, the only one in this one is when they're about to force feed the mother a pizza and yes. they they have to we well, need to go back a few minutes in the film yeah so the mother has been tied to the bed Mm. while they investigate whether or not well, why he is Elias so yeah. while he investigates whether or not she is his mother mm-hmm. the doorbell rings and it's the Red Cross come for a donation so they duct tape her mouth yeah. the, the Red Cross stay too long basically have a cup of tea or whatever and the second they close the front door she manages to blow like lick yeah, and yeah. get the duct tape off her mouth yeah. and she shouts for help so Elias uh, goes upstairs and super glues her lips closed mm. And then he sat downstairs eating pizza, talking to his brother, who is um, absent, actually, because he's mm-hmm. yeah, not there. And he thinks, oh, maybe my mum's hungry. So he goes upstairs and, oh, no, I super glued her mouth shut. Now I remember. Yeah. So he takes a pair of scissors and he very delicately cuts the the glue between her lips. Yeah. And it's the most tense thing in the whole film. Yeah. Possibly in any film I've watched in the last <laughs> few years. Right. And he misses, and her lip just bursts. Yeah. And then, because she, she screams, she tears the. Re- oh goodness me! It's it's pretty awful. Yeah, yeah. it's horrible. Yeah. Um, I'd put it up there, as I'm sure you uh, mentioned as well, with the loved ones. Mm. And this is an, a much maligned uh, film from our oeuvre, mm. which I, you know, it's it's still got the lowest downloads of all our films, which is. It's, really? Yeah. Well, if you, yeah, I help really, it out, yeah. guys. I, I encourage you to go and find out. If you, if you, if you've listened to this this far, I assume you've seen Good Night Mummy, mm-hmm. and on that basis, you'll probably very much enjoy the loved ones. Yeah. Which I would say is a better film. Yes. Um, the loved ones has an air of hysteria, though. Yeah. That this film is totally lacking. Um, and I, I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this film seems to be tied up in its own sense of realism. Yeah. Which is not very realistic at all. But then again, this, this this scene is another one which puts the audience in a really difficult position because there's no sympathetic character. At this well, point. I think at this point you're supposed to start feeling sorry for the mother, whether she's the mother or not. Yeah, but it changes it changes the tone in a really negative, un, like just uncomfortable way, mm. in my opinion, anyway. I don't know. One argument, right, in defence mm. of it, is the one I mentioned earlier, which is. She's being tortured by the son. Yeah. And she says, basically, what, why have I done to deserve this? You, you, you're thinking that along with her. Hmm. And he shows her the video of her basically hitting him. Yeah. And he's like, well, you serve, serves you right. You, you've done this to yourself sort of thing. The sins of the father becomes the sins of the son. The sins of the mother. The, the abuse of the mother becomes the abuse of yeah, the mother. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. I sort of get that, yeah. But um, I stand by my 
sentiment that it, it removes any protagonist from the film. Yes. Because they're as bad as each other. Do you need a protagonist? Who's the protagonist in The Shining, for instance? Well, like, presumably Wendy and Danny. You know, nominally Wendy and Danny. Yeah. Um, you don't need a protagonist. Not You know, like a clockwork orange. Mm. Or, you know, you can have a protagonist that does uh, horrible an things. An anti-hero. Yeah. yeah. But I just don't think that I... I mean, like, by this point, I'd... You've, you're not vested in no, any I'd, of the characters. No, I like... Look, I'm, this is episode 48. Yeah. Uh, it's rare that I've been this down on a film, right? And mm. I don't think this is a bad film as much as the last 40 minutes probably contradict that, mm. seem to contradict that. I just I just think it it did a lot to rile me, basically. And mm. I think, as, as I've said, uh, I just... I did, didn't I didn't care about any of the characters in the film right yeah um by this point and because I had guessed the end like because presumably you're you're also supposed to think well one of the twins is good mm. because it appears that Lucas is sort of influencing Elias yeah into, into doing these things and you're thinking well, all, all it needs is Elias to just you know get away from Lucas long enough for his influence to wane on mm. him and it does appear to be the case yeah exactly yeah. but it just yeah but knowing as I was pretty sure by this point that the other twin didn't even exist <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I found it a bit exhausting by this point really. yeah. and it's, it's a, obviously a really unpleasant section of the film as well when yes. she's being tortured yeah and, and, it, and, and yeah. It, just, it does it does descend into the, very closely to torture porn doesn't it yeah and then it, it feeds into the ending as well mm. which is the mother super glued to the floor. Hmm. I take it as that, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then basically immolated. Yeah. In, a, in so burning alcohol. My understanding was that the kid died as well. No, I thought not. Do you not? Do you not agree? Okay. I thought he. I thought it, the ending meant that he was running around out there and that he'd killed them so that he could. Yeah, I see, I, I, I see yeah. what you mean, yeah. Um, but I also thought that that suggested that he was behind everything. Mm. That he killed Lucas and he killed the mother. Okay. And perhaps the mother... Because she, she clearly has... I mean, we mentioned a fractured relationship with Lucas. It's yeah. really a fractured relationship with, with Elias. She keeps hitting him. She says... I mean, she, she's obviously very angry at him for something. And mm. this seems to be after an accident. Yeah. I thought maybe he had tried to kill both of them, maybe. Right. Or so just... he was he was already damaged and evil beforehand. Yes. Okay. I I I didn't get that. I thought that I thought that maybe he'd died as well because of the way that they stand together and sort of they do that hot, like really weird fourth wall breaking sort of yeah. grin at the camera. And I thought that maybe they were. You know, it was showing that they were all together in the afterlife, sort of okay. thing. Possibly, yeah. Hmm. I guess it's an ambiguous ending. Yes. So, Chris, with that in mind and all that said about this divisive film, hmm. if we had an, if we had a referendum, would you keep this film in the podcast uh, back catalogue? I would be voting for. Good night, Mummy Exit. <laughs> Good night, Mexit. <laughs> um, well, I mean, let's talk about how to survive. Yeah, how, uh, would, how would you survive? Then? Well, m- bullet point number one. Um, maybe you, if, you're, if you're a mother and you have any sort of level of responsibility or care for your child, mm. maybe spend some of your presumably considerable wealth. Mm-hmm. Given the house and, and things like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the fact that she's able to afford plastic surgery. Yeah. Uh, on private therapy for your child as opposed to cosmetic surgery for yourself. Right. Um, that is, um, you know, I mean, that is probably an underlying message of the film. Perhaps. Yeah. yeah. That she's a selfish person. Well, ch- you know, children who uh, go through trauma in their childhood mm. typically are given therapy. Yes. Because it helps them understand and manage their grief. Yes. Because... Children typically aren't set up to do that. Not with equipped that. for it. No. Yeah. Um, 
whatever the child had already is mm -hmm. clearly not sufficient. She yeah. should know that because he's clearly laboring under the misapprehension that his brother is still alive. Yes. That is quite a considerable misapprehension <laughs> as misapprehensions go. Yes. Um, so rather than uh, paying for her vanity surgery, mm. um, she should, she should uh, pay for the psychological help that her son clearly so desperately needs. Yes. As well as that, you know, and not to mention the fact that her surgery appears to be the tipping point for her son's already damaged psyche. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah, um, because it's her his and, suspicion and, and paranoia that it's it's not the same woman, unless that, he did in fact kill Lucas and tried to kill the mother for some reason. Maybe, but it's it's, I mean, it's, it's almost too ambiguous. Yeah. To, to make any. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny that isn't it? it's almost too. It's almost like it's not well drawn out enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I agree. Yeah, uh, counselling would certainly help, unless of course he's a psychopath. In which case, there's no no hope for him. Well, yeah, I mean. In which case, what can you do? Well, you know, a psychopath would, you know, presumably psychopathic children are given tailored help, you know, yeah. in treatment. They don't just go, well, your son's a psychopath, so yeah, best of him. luck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true enough. So seek seek medical help or, or mental health assistance. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Uh, I did have one which I had to cross out by the end. Okay. Which was uh, just apologise. <laughs> yeah because um, when the mother says well when when Elia says to Lucas oh she's only cooked my dinner again yeah uh, she hasn't cooked you one for some reason why don't mm. you just apologise to her yeah he says no I can't do that yeah um, because you know I'm dead uh, yeah <laughs> so that would be impossible yeah um, what would he be apologising for I don't know well it's I don't know Again, I, d I don't oh, know. It's almost like yeah. <laughs> badly thought. It's out. almost like a sunk cost thing, isn't it? Yeah. Like you've you've come this far. Like you could apologise to her for whatever he's done in the past, and then apologise for making her a you know, cockroach, yeah. and then apologise for the alcohol dead cat in the living room. Yes, and then, they, but then like by that point, you realise you've um, super glued her lips together, yeah. and then you're like, well, I've come this far. You know. Mm. Yes, so, it's, it's, it's a bit sorry. Sorry, sorry. Only goes so far. Joe. Exactly. It's it's a bit. Um, she does end up badly disfigured. Her face. Yes. Well, and her whole body in the end. Yes, but I mean the face, the f the torture of the face, and the, the disfigurement of the face seems to be a laboured point of the film. Yeah. Uh, so she, she when she takes the bandages off, she ends up quite beautiful. Yes. Or that's the that's the intention of the mm -hmm. filmmaker, and she seems to be punished for that. Right. By her son. Okay. Because it's like, oh, well, you know what I mean? It's, yeah, I, yeah, It's almost like she, that's the message of the film is, I don't know, just don't get plastic surgery? Or... <laughs> <laughs> uh. Well, speaking of self-improvement, um, the mother decides that, uh, I mean, she's, she's glued to the floor in the climactic scene. Yeah. And the fire is spreading and she's unable to free herself. Glued to the floor. Yes. You just remove the skin from your hands, wouldn't you? Well... She she is is demonstrably able to remove her hands yeah. from the floor because when she's set ablaze, she does so very quickly. Yeah. Um, so unless we're to believe that the glue melts instantly, yeah. which I don't yeah. think is the case, um, you know, she, she it may be that she's only able to do this because of the massive adrenaline shot that her body would presumably give her yeah. when it realises that it is 100% on fire. Um, <laughs> so... Basically, had she done some previous core training, right, right for right. her physique, she would have more core strength, yeah, and she'd be able to lift her body, you know, up in a sort of yoga sit-up sort of maneuver, yeah, yeah, with more power, and she'd generate the. I mean, I'm pretty sure I don't do that. I don't do much yoga. She, what she needs to do is generate leverage. Yeah, yeah, and I don't think she tries hard enough, Joe. No. Oh, uh, Until she, she's she, on fire. She does look like a, ba like a big dinner would kill her. Basically, <laughs> basically, my point is that she, if she's able to do it when she's on fire, yeah. she can do it beforehand. Fire doesn't grant you extra strength. It probably would give you a bit of urgency, though, wouldn't it? It would do, yeah. I think that's fair. At that point, you're like, oh, well, the house might burn down in two or but, three minutes. Yeah, but it would, you'd presume that the urgency would kick in before you're actually on fire, though. Yeah. When he said fire to the curtains, it's probably when I'd 
Yeah. Yeah. Decide. <laughs> yeah. So that's you, you when you, think, that's you, when you think... decide my my life and the life of my child who, for whom yeah. I presumably still care uh, is worth more to me than the skin on my hands yeah although maybe not because she's quite um, selfish and she's maybe, selfish. maybe that's it maybe that's it just to summarise that yeah you'd say in advance of potentially being super good to the floor yeah well I mean if anyone should do crunches yeah well we're advocates of physical well-being aren't we yeah I mean we above and beyond everything else yeah so just look after yourself yeah I mean as long as you yeah strong core hmm. Keep, you know, nothing with strong core yeah my next one is more of a general health concern uh, and I don't think this is outlandish cockroaches mm-hmm. they are vermin right and with good reason I mean you, okay. you would traditionally call an exterminator to yeah. deal with that many cockroaches do they carry place. disease well I'm glad if you only there was someone who could tell me. Yes. I've dug into a website. Okay. I didn't write down what one, um, but it doesn't matter. These are seven dangers associated with having uh, a large amount of cockroaches living in your house. Mm-hmm. Number one, food contamination. Okay. Cockroaches can virtually live by eating anything. Apart from the food we eat, they also feed on dead plants, animals, fecal matter, glue... Soap, paper, leather, and even strands of fallen hair. Okay. So maybe that was... Uh, maybe the, the cockroaches the glue. ate through the glue. <laughs> uh, number two, inoculation of disease-causing bacteria. While feeding cockroaches, regurgitate their own saliva and digestive fluids from their mouth to inoculate your food with germs or bacteria residing in their gut. Nice. Mm. Sorry if this sounds grammatically incorrect, by the way. I'm mm. reading it from whatever website I got it from. As written. Number three, cockroach bites. Some species of cockroaches have been found to bite humans. These cases are rare, but if your home is heavily infested with these insects, as their one definitely is, mm-hmm. uh, then you should be careful because they can nibble on fingernails, toes, and soft parts of the skin, causing wounds. Oof. Number five, food poisoning. Uh, in an epidemic outbreak of food poisoning, it was found that the, inc- the incidence of new cases dropped abruptly after cockroach infestation was eliminated. So okay. no salmonella or uh, typhoid or anything like that. Hmm. Number six, allergies. Cockroaches can cause allergies. Their saliva secretion and body parts contain hundreds of allergens that can trigger an undesirable reaction. Now, we don't see anyone sneezing or coughing or anything no. like that. So fine. Seven, asthma. Cockroaches can be the worst enemies of asthmatic people. Uh, and finally... Invasion of body parts. Right. He grimaced. Mm. Cockroaches can not only invade your home, but also your body. There are several cases of cockroaches entering the ear and nose while sleeping, uh, and also the mouth, Mm. which does happen in the film. Okay, so get rid of the cockroaches. Get rid of the cockroaches. Okay. And, oh, what's that? You're asking, how do you do that? Well, luckily... I've got some ideas for you. Okay. Number one, keep your house clean if you don't want to see that ugly creature. Number two, ensure that areas like the sink and the food preparation area is cleaned before you go to sleep. Yeah. Uh, Number three, empty the dustbin in your kitchen regularly. Uh, Number four, don't leave your food open at night to prevent contamination. Okay. Number five, never keep old newspapers, books, and magazines stacked openly. Hmm. Number six, keep cockroach sprays handy. Number seven, block all entrances from which you think cockroaches are gaining entry to your home. Mm-hmm. And number eight, pest control for heavy infestation is a must. Okay. So get in touch with a pest control person. Sure. That mother seems to keep a pretty clean house. Yeah. It seems surprising to me that she put Very up with the cockroaches yeah. for that long. Yeah. For any matter. They're almost like pets. Aren't they? Yeah. They're like a, a project, aren't they? Yeah. It's weird. Um, well, my, my final uh, suggestion for them uh, is very simple, really. Yeah. Um, fire retardant spray. Yeah. Coat your whole house in it. Do you do that? Well, why doesn't everyone do that? Probably expensive. I'm going to cost. Yeah, but like, is it, is it more expensive than having your whole house burned down? Does it smell bad? Is it more expensive than death? Is it. Like noxious. Does it smell? Does it smell worse? Does it smell worse than being dead? 
Is it toxic? Is it more toxic than being dead? Is it toxic? <laughs> is it more toxic than I mean, burning to death? Is there a, a, a dose, overdose of that thing? I don't know. I, I t- I'll tell you what, there is an overdose of fire that you can have. Well, on, I'm going to go, go home yeah. now and just cope my entire house. Do you know what, though? Times this back. is true. I was using your computer earlier to print my notes. Yeah. And I saw that your most recent Google search was for fire retardant curtains. Yeah. Did you watch this film and become, like, paranoid about your curtains being set on fire? No, by I basically, I looked for uh, flame, yeah, fire, fire retardant curtains. Yeah. Uh, in in for this suggestion of how to survive, um, he, but then it was added to a shopping cart. <laughs> <laughs> but then I thought, why stop there, Joe? Yeah. Because it's not just the curtains that get set ablaze, is it? It's, it's the, the massive vat of alcohol. Well, yeah. But if all the alcohol in the house was covered in flame retardant spray, yeah. then she'd be laughing. If you had that, you know, that liquid repellent spray as well hmm. on the carpet. The the flaming alcohol would just rush straight, <laughs> straight out, out of the front house. door. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So aquaphobic spray on all floors. Do you, in the morning, yeah. coat your body like sun cream with flame retardant spray? My sun cream? But instead of sun cream, like oh, sun cream. Uh, yeah. And then I go to my job as a chimney sweep. <laughs> you do it when, when, when the fire when is When the fire lit. is on, yeah. 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 Just to, yeah, because you want the upward airflow. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Well, fair enough. I can't see any problem with that. No. <laughs> and my final how to survive mm. um, comes from psychology today. Okay. How should you respond to your child's imaginary friend? Okay. That's the closest I could find to how should you respond to your child's... Uh, Homicidal. <laughs> yeah. Hallucinated twin brother who gives him uh, murderous advice. Sure. If your child has an invisible friend... Relax and enjoy it. <laughs> Ask questions to find out about the friend. Sure. You may learn something about your child's current interests, wishes, fears, or concerns. I think he wishes that his brother was still alive. You may even want to write down and save your child's adorable answers. It's okay to lay down the law if the imaginary friend's demands or behaviours become too disruptive. Okay. And that may be something we need I here. think that, that, yeah, he might have crossed the line. Without harshly challenging the existence of the friend, you can say things like... I don't care who made this mess, you need to wipe it up. Or, Aunt Carol is coming in the car with us, so Mr. Murph will have to find somewhere else to sit today. Okay. Is Aunt Carol uh, imaginary in this scenario as well? (laughs) (laughs) Do you have... Here's one of the bits of of advice. Get your own imaginary friend to fight their imaginary friend and then say your imaginary friend is one and... (laughs) Yeah. Well, so you ha- then you own dominion over your. So the, the the only way she could have survived is if she'd said the the girl in the picture at the beginning, who was probably her twin sister. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah. Who was also probably it's just there. a friend, Joe. Uh, I mean, you and I, we we dress the same all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To the point where it's as if it's as if our we are identical. Will, yeah. <laughs> not be able to tell us apart. Yeah. Uh, um. This goes on, by the way. Yeah. On the other hand. If it's not too much trouble, go ahead, play along. Okay. Uh, which is the exact phrase used in the film. Mm-hmm. Set an extra place at the table for the imaginary friend. If your child asks you to do so, but be careful not to take over. An imaginary friend is a unique and magical expression of your child's imagination, so let your child be in charge of it. Okay. Not, um, I mean, that is what happens, basically. Yeah. Although, is it? Because she tries to intervene, doesn't she? So you can't, you can't listen to that guy anymore. That guy. <laughs> that guy. Yeah. I don't know. It's di- it's difficult to say, Joe. I would argue that the last hour of discussion has told us that there are no clear answers in the film "Good Night, Mummy." No. Um, and we're not going to. We can see for another hour and debate it. But yeah. I don't think that was going to benefit anyone, is it? No. Next week on the How to Survive podcast, we're featuring uh, an excellent film. I'm sure. I it's a seen tiny, it. tiny little independent production. Yeah. Independent. It's a really, really small scale. Yeah. Film. Um, it's called Independence Day Resurgence. Yeah. Yeah. Or it could be any reword, basically, yeah. couldn't it? Yeah. Re- retribution. Redemption. Yeah. yeah. Return. Yeah. Replay. Yeah. Re. Rev. 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 Rev.
<laughs> hard word to say when you can't remember what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, all Independence wo- all Day. All words are, really. Independence Day Resurgence yeah. is the movie. Because they, they're resurging. What does it mean? Resurgence <laughs> is such a fucking stupid word. Independence Day resurfacing. Independence resurgence. Resurgence. It doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it's There's been a resurgence. Because Independence Day 1 was subtitled Surgence. Yeah. And they're doing Wait, it again. Insurgents? Yeah. Because resurgence is like what you say, like, oh... There's pol- been a resurgence pol- yeah. of... Pogs have had a bit of resurgence in the recent years. Or Go-Go's or Pokemon or something. Yeah. Not Alien Invaders. Yeah. I'm assuming the movie isn't about... The newspapers, the newspapers in that universe aren't going to be going, oh, there's been a resurgence of alien activity <laughs> on the planet as a country-sized spaceship appears. It's quite a... Like, innocuous word, isn't it? Resurgence. Yeah. It's it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Resurgence. Can you resurge? I don't know. I think, I think you ha- I, th- I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a verb, is it? It's, you know, like a, I mean, you're the English graduate, but. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's a, it's a nominalised verb, yeah, so it's resurge, resurgence would be to resurge. Yeah. yeah, you can, you can have, you could have res- resurged. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. It's, it's a stupid word. I tell you what, Joe, it's, it's, it's so overused and cliche that it's become its own meaning. I, I wish we'd researched the meaning of this word before we started talking about it. In many ways, <laughs> the discussion about resurgence has been the most interesting part of this yeah, podcast and enlightening. In many ways, Joe, there's as few answers about this discussion <laughs> as there are about Goodnight Mummy. Yep. Yeah. But if you think you've got any answers, then do email in at howtosurviveshow at gmail.com. You can also get in touch on Twitter. The Twitter handle is at howtosurvivepod. Yes, at howtosurvivepod. If you are going to see Independence Day Resurgence mm. uh, this week, next week, you've seen it already. It's, you know, it's probably by now, probably a few people have seen it. Yeah. Uh, email in howtosurviveshow at gmail.com. How will you survive Independence Day? Or indeed, if you were Jeff Goldblum or... Will Smith's stepson. Yeah. How would you survive Independence Day resurgence? And don't forget that episode 50 in two weeks' time, uh, it's our big episode 50 bonanza. It's the inaugural How to Survive show, Survivors Hall of Fame. We're going to be recapping some of our favourite survivors from the previous 49 films and welcoming one of them into the How to Survive show, Survivors Hall of Fame. Yes. At the moment... Jason Bourne is in there. Yeah. On his own. He's lonely. Because he's broken in. Yeah. Uh, but and killed J- everyone inside. Jason Bourne is always in there, yeah. basically. He's your he's a given. Yeah, he's, he's, the, he's the equivalent him. of the Bible in the Desert Island Discs. Yes. Uh, no one this week. No one... No. If you're remotely suitable. No. Uh, they will die. Yeah. Or even if Elias survives, I don't want him there. No. So, thanks very much for listening. Uh, Don't forget to rate and review us on iTunes or whatever pod catcher you use. Uh, And thanks very much. Thank you very much indeed. Auf Wiedersehen. Ich sei, ich sei. (laughs) It must be a good ending. There's no quotes because it's all in Austrian. (laughs) 